Well, hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom, where we're going to be doing a look into last night's games, the Rangers and Carolina Hurricanes and Calgary and Edmonton, two polarly different teams. And this is my reaction. This is one take. I never do two takes. I never edit nothing. I go straight out and I don't research. No. And people, people will say, well, people won't take you seriously if you don't research. Really? Have you listened to some of the people that research? I mean, there's some really good guys. Don't get me wrong. Okay. They do research before their videos. They don't know nothing, man. <laughs> they, they know the little facts, but they don't know anything. I do it all off the top of my head. And uh, I'm usually pretty accurate. I was seven for eight on my first round picks. And I'm going to probably do really well in here. But this is my reaction to those two games and my takes and all that sort of things like that. And you know what? Even my reaction and my takes, they're cool. But what's more important is what your reaction and take is. So let me know down there in the comments. Sub yourself up. Tell me what you thought about the game, stuff like that. Don't be afraid. Somebody may not agree with you. It's okay. I may not agree with you. You may not agree with me. That's okay. And you can be whatever. Don't worry about the cussing. You don't like what I say? Call me an idiot. I'm okay with that. This is hockey, man. If you can't handle being called an idiot, you shouldn't be in hockey. You see the people on the ice? Did you play hockey? Uh, we'll get to it in a second. I'm going to be specific about something that happened on the ice. I'll tell you what. If you're a person that takes offense to stuff, and if you're on this channel, I people say, well, you know, if you get offended easy, you don't want to be here. Well, nobody knows if they get offended easy. I'm going to take it one step further. If you get offended at all, you probably don't want to listen to what I'm going to say. <laughs> this is a, yeah, probably not. We're having fun. I'm going to say some stuff. Whatever I say, I say. May apologize. Maybe I won't. I don't know. But this is what you're getting here. So if you're going to get all cry and whiny about stuff, it's probably not for you. All right. Let's go to it. All right. Rangers versus Hurricanes. By the way, Rangers, Hurricanes fans, sub yourself up. Tell me what you think about what I'm about to say. And I don't care, like I said, if you hate it, if you think I'm stupid, if I don't know what I'm talking about. Remember, I did this off the top of my head. So if there's some factual information you didn't have and you don't take it and you don't take me seriously because I didn't nail it, okay, whatever. I'm probably not for you. Okay, let's move on. Hurricanes Rangers. Now, the Rangers tried to do something that we've seen in the past, and I kind of thought they would. I just didn't know if it was going to be to this level. I figure the Rangers were going to play a trap against Carolina because they got to know that if they run and gun with Carolina, they're going to get hosed, and we're going to look as to why that is. But um, they played it very, very well. The first two periods, I think the Hurricanes had about 10 or 11 shots. Uh and the Rangers were clogging up the neutral zone. But more importantly, they were, they were catching them right at the blue line, daring them, daring the Hurricanes to play a dump and chase game. Because if there's one place that the Rangers can definitely beat Carolina, it's with their size on defense and their puck moving on defense. They've got great puck moving defensemen. So what they're doing is they're daring them to dump it. Carolina's trying not to. They don't want to dump and chase. They know that that's not their game, and it's certainly not their game against a Rangers team whose biggest strength is probably right now their puck-moving defenseman. So they fought it for two periods, and the Rangers were winning. They were doing a heck of a job. They were blocking any passes out towards the middle. They were protecting their slot all over the place. Really good job. Now, the problem with this, and, and also they're slowing down the game. I seen it like if you weren't a Rangers or a Hurricanes fan, I bet you there the uh, TV ratings went down in the second period because it, it would have been a boring game to watch. For purists and people that absolutely just love all the strategy of the game, and like I do, 
Um, I don't, I don't mind it. I admit it's slow and it's a little hard to watch because you're waiting for a couple saves to happen and stuff. And Shesterkin was certainly getting his saves in, but the Rangers were doing a really good job. Actually, Ranta as well, because the Rangers were out shooting them as well, and Ranta was stopping some, some making some nice stops along the way. But overall, it was a kind, it was a pretty kind of boring game. And then. Um, in the third period, Carolina started figuring it out. Truba had some big hits, uh, like block shots. See, okay, here's something. Now let's look at Carolina's, let's look at blocks. Block shots, not too many block shots here, right? Not too many block shots here, right? Look at the block shots for, especially on defense, five, three, two, a lot of block shots. Petrano blocking lots. And the reason why that is, is because Carolina had possession more. It's not because, like you see, Truba had blocked five block shots uh, and six hits. And they're like, wow, look at Truba. He's blocking shots. It's not like the other, it's not like guys like Slavin and Cole and those guys are like, oh, I'm not blocking that shot. If they, they'll block shots just as well as Truba will. Slavin can block shots all day long, but he doesn't have to because he's not, he keeps more often than not, he keeps the puck off the opposition stick in the defensive zone. Block, having blocked shots does not mean that you're a great defensive player. It just, it can mean that you spend way too much time in your own zone. You see what I'm saying? You're not blocking shots if you're not in your own zone. So Carolina did control the play a lot. Rangers shot a lot and got some pretty good shots in. And, you know, I, their trap system worked. The question here is, are they going to be able to do that continuously and win games like that? Their biggest strength is definitely defense. I mean, their biggest, biggest strength is Shesterkin, of course. And playing that type of system with Shesterkin, you're going to make for a lot of low-scoring games and, and probably keep you in – a in the chance. But the thing is, that type of defensive system, you got to change it up a little bit. Now, what I think that you're going to see Carolina do is they're going to line up just before the blue line. And that's what they started doing in the third, their forwards just before the blue line. And basically make the Rangers stop on their feet. And then they're going to dump in the puck. That's what you got to do against that. You have to get the Rangers players almost to a dead stop. If they're going to to guard, guard their defensive blue line like that, you bring them to a dead stop, and then you test them with their speed. Where you dump it, they got to turn around and go to the corner, and you can beat them to the corner. Now, that being said, even if they do that, I don't think the Rangers aren't going to mind that too much because they have some very big defensemen there. Let's look at it. Um, a very good, solid, strong defenseman. Lindgren's not big, but he's strong. He's extremely strong. Um, guys like Fox, it's not about their size. It's about his stick work. You know, it, once he gets it on a stick, it's not going to stay there very long. But Kyandre Miller was a beast last, and, and Truba. Braun and Schneider. Schneider, for a 20-year-old, is playing fantastic. Those are the guys... That if they try to do that, they're still going to have difficulty. But if they can get to the puck first, they can have they can uh, poke it to another guy, and they can set up position down behind the net. And that's sort of what they started doing in the third. And then over time, of course, you know Cole just had a nice shot there. But um, there, wow, no, sorry, that was uh, Lindgren making a really bad move, <laughs> moving out of the way and putting his stick. And then, like making it look like he was, where he was playing for the other team, but that's what's going to happen there. So they're going to have to adjust again. I don't know how the Rangers are going to adjust to that because honestly, I think the best way to beat Carolina is what they did, and they lost. That concerns me. They played probably the best that they could at doing the very thing that's going to probably give them the best shot at beating Carolina, and they're lost. And if they try it again like that, I think they're going to lose again. So they're going to have to do something different. they got to work on a different trap. 
a one one three, uh, one uh, a one two one, maybe. You know, they got you got to change it up because if you do the same thing with Carolina over and over again, Brendan Moore's a genius. He'll figure it out. Um, as far as Carolina is concerned, I mean, Lafreniere had a great had a great game again. He's having a great playoffs, <clears throat> but. It's the other thing about playing that type of uh, defense is it makes it very difficult for the forwards to because they got to do most of the work. They you get the puck out along the boards quick. Carolina is going to be right on them in the in the defensive zone in the uh, in the offensive zone, and then they got to work out some. They got to try to get some speed up through the neutral zone to get up there. They're playing a full rink. And you do that for a long series, and you're going to be pretty tired. So um, I think Carolina's overall depth, again, they know that. The bottom, Niederreiter, Stahl, Faust. Uh, Lorenz, who is, who is he in for? Who is out? Oh, Stepan. They put Lorenz in for Stepan. One and some more size. That's right. Uh, Koki, I mean, Nietzsche's. Like the, those two lines, those bottom, they are better than Kako, Hito, and I, although Lafreniere is playing very well, uh, I still take that third line and the fourth line. Forget about it. Uh, Ryan Reeves, I know, I know you love him. He because he he creates havoc, right? He gets the energy up, no doubt about that. But he is horrible in every other facet of the game. I, like this fourth line for Carolina, you're not going to throw Carolina off mentally, Rangers fans. That is the biggest problem in the series. You're going to try to throw Carolina off mentally. That's why you have guys like Reeves in there. And uh, I'm telling you, I, I believe, I should tell you, I believe that you're not going to do it. It's gonna. This is a team that's very robotic, and I don't believe they're gonna get them off mentally. It's. I think Ryan Reeves is just not. You got to get Barkley Goudreau back or something like that. They did. That's my take on on that. Carolina has got a deeper top, bottom six. Uh, I think the Rangers, you know, have some really good weapons up front. No doubt about that. Maybe even a little better weapons in their top six but only marginally of course a better goaltender but um the overall defense for the carolina is better and their overall system that they play with with this is better and they showed it okay so let's go to the next let's go to the next game then what tell me what you think sub yourself up tell me what you think about what i just said there rangers fans carolina carolina fans uh, do you agree with me with Reeves? Do you agree with me about, uh, you know, the way the Rangers played? Uh, I got to say, there's one thing I forgot to say here, is that I was surprised that Carolina, it looked like they were surprised that the Rangers were gonna, did what they did. The Columbus Blue Jackets did it to Toronto and Tampa Bay. Tortorella used to do this stuff all the time, even more so. He would ice the puck on purpose. To a team like Carolina, he would try to have that game be as slow as he possibly could get it if he had a team like he had in Columbus. And that's sort of what the Rangers did. But I, I even think that Tortorella did it with Columbus even better. Okay, Oilers versus Flames. And uh, <laughs> I'm pretty sure both sides would have called this a shit show. Shit show. Uh, of course, it's fun to watch. It's fun to watch teams get like two goals in the first two shots by uh, Lindholm and Andrew Manjapani. Uh, you know, Smith and Markstrom are going to get the brunt of this. I think Markstrom was worse than Smith. Uh, actually, I think Smith was the best out of all the goaltenders that went in. Koskinen looked even worse. Uh, but I said it before the series, I took Calgary in five for a reason. And the main reason was because of Keith, Barry, especially at 20 minutes a night. My gosh. Why is Barry getting more freaking minutes than Bouchard? I, I, I don't get it. Um, 
you know, Kulak is, was a good acquisition. Uh, Nurse had a terrible night. But overall, I like Nurse. But it really comes down to Barry and Keith in your top six in comparison to having uh, even Stone. Stone is not a great defenseman, but he's better than both of them. Basically, Keith and Barry, with Sutter as a coach especially, would not touch the ice in this series. They wouldn't take anybody that's on this. They wouldn't take Zadarov for sure. Zadarov is a beast defensively. Gabranson's having one of his best year. He's not spectacular, but he's better than either one of them. At least he brings some pain every once in a while too, which is important. Uh, yeah, Stone, he's, I mean, he's not great defensively, but he's got a blistering shot and he's big and he can do some physical things. Like, there's no way if, uh, if, and if they get Tanov back, forget about it. They're going to destroy them. And that's what I was saying before. Now, as far as the game itself, uh, Edmonton, even though they're bad defensively, they were bad for them bad defensively, which is like stupidly bad. That is absolutely ridiculously bad because it wasn't even just the defense. It was the offense as well. And it was players that you don't normally see playing like that. They look jittery. They look like they were uh, overhyped. Uh, they, I don't know. They look like amateurs out there. The whole, everybody, it was terrible. And then Calgary, of course, lets, they kind of fell asleep. Like, it was a really weird game. Um, you know, Coleman pots a couple. They get up, like, what were they up? One, two, three, four, five to one. Bouchard comes back, then it's six and then just three unanswered goals. Wait, is it one, two, three, four, five? It's five, two. Six, two, and then, you know, they come up, come, Edmonton actually comes back and ties it where they just fell asleep. I was so surprised to see Calgary fall asleep like that. I, I didn't, they, they, to a man, just seemed like, oh, it's over. It's over. Edmonton's just going to roll over here. And, uh, you know, give it to Edmonton. They came back. But I was doing a live stream with Peyton on the radio at the time. And I said, and I, both of us said at the same time, even when I was tied, it was like, we're still not winning this game, right? Like, you, 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 you so felt that Calgary was going to wake up and come back and pot a couple. And that's, that's what they did. Um, I think Calgary can play. Well, Cal, Calgary's probably not going to let down that again. Like, they're, they're not going to have a letdown like that too often. Uh, if if Edmonton plays their best defense, it's not even close to what Calgary can do in the offensive zone. Uh, I took I took Edmonton to win in seven against L.A. And I, I, you know, I said offensively, this shouldn't even be close. You got, you know, people get starry-eyed with McDavid and Dreisaitl, and so should you. They're amazing. And in all honesty, with those two guys on your team, you only need an average defense. You only need an average defense to succeed, but they don't have an average defense. Cody Cece's having a pretty good year, but, I mean, he's not a great defenseman. He's a 5-6 on most teams. You know, what do we have? We have one 1-2 one, guy in Nurse. And he wouldn't be a one in a lot on a lot of teams, you know. He'd be a two on a lot of teams. Um, like I said, Keith probably wouldn't make a lot of rosters. Barry, maybe it depends on, you know. He has some power play. Okay, like he's not, he's overrated on the power play, but he can play the power play. He has a big shot. Uh, and people are going to say, well, he had a point a game two years ago. All second assist. It was like the luckiest point a game I'd ever seen. And his expected offense was so bad, was was way bad in comparison to what his actual numbers are. Um, and his expected defense, don't even get into it. I mean, he's just a clown in the defensive zone. Absolute clown. Uh, he One-on-ones, he gets burnt constantly all the time. Uh People talk a lot about coughing up the puck. You know what? An offensive player is going to cough up the puck sometimes. Maybe even 
once every two, three games, something like that. But Barry, it's especially if he's having a bad night, for him, bad night, like three times in a, in a game. Easy. And win a battle against the boards? Never. Never. Duncan Keith, too. You can't win a battle. When he was young, he used to be able to get to the puck before anybody else and move it just beautifully. But now, and if he doesn't, he's beat. He's pretty much beat every time he touches the puck. So, I still say Calgary in five. I know everybody's going to make excuses for that game last night. I saw a team that was bad defensively, had a really bad game defensively. That's what I saw. And uh, now, as far as lineup is concerned, what the hell? I Like, somebody has to explain to me why Josh Archibald is playing up with McDavid and Dreisaitl and stuff like that. Josh Archibald does nothing. He has no hockey IQ whatsoever. He 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 can hit. Yeah, everybody loves the guy because he he's he's not very big, but he'll go out there and hit people like he's brave. But he hits when you're not supposed to be hitting. He go he puts himself out of position constantly to take a hit, and he's only 5'10", 176. He hits you, and it's like okay, buddy, whatever. Like, it's just a sign of bravery. So it gives the team a little energy. If you really need a Josh Archibald to do that for you, you're fucked already. You're screwed already, man. If you need a Josh Archibald to do that for you, to have energy in the playoffs, you're done before you even get started. Sorry. Uh, Because he's terrible defensively. He has virtually no offense whatsoever. Everybody he plays with, he drag, he's an anchor on any line you put him on. I wanted to talk about this today because he's absolutely brutal. And to play him up higher in the lineup, putting Cassian up there. I can only imagine the only reason why they put Cassian up there is because something happened throughout the game and they had to, and McDavid had to take a number. And Cassian is going up there to hit somebody for a short amount of time. I kind of get that. But honestly, if you're down and you're like, he's not going to do, he's going to drag the team. Every other way, he's going to drag him down. You only do that for maybe a shift or two. That's it. But if you look at Calgary, they never do that. Calgary never has Lucic up here in the top lines. Ever. Those lines, Sutter knows that it's why would you take a guy and drag him up here, drag him here? If if you need Lucic to, you know, something happened to Goudreau, something happened to Lindholm or, or something like that. Of course, they do have Matthew Kachuk up there anyways to take care of that, right? So that helps. It's nice to have a big guy like that. We have Kane. Isn't that what his job is supposed to be? Do you have to put Cassie in to drag down the line for two shifts when you need goals? All right, tell me what you think, Edmonton fans. But, uh, you know, Lucic wouldn't go up those lines. I know Sutter from when he was in L.A. He never did that. If, if, if there's a number to be taken, you wait your spot on the fourth line and take that number. Or you just take whoever and you tell him, the reason why I did that was because your guy did this. So you tell him on the bench, you tell him on the bench, and I'm going to tell him too. You do that again. And this guy I'm playing with down here, like say Lucic with Edmonton, he does it to Jesse Puglia Harvey. Or, you know, like he like he's not quite often going to play against the top line all the time. So he's not going to be able to uh, do it to uh, a McDavid or a dry settle. See, Cassian will go up there because he's going to be, they want him to do something to one of the top line guys that are playing with dry settle McDavid, right? But what, Sutter will do is like just take a guy that take a guy, hurt him, hurt him bad, you know, as bad as you can, and you tell him, and you tell and and we'll tell, you know, that's gonna happen to that guy again if you do that again. That's all you gotta do. You don't need to put Cassian on the top freaking line. All right, that's my take. That's what I got to say about that. I went 15 minutes on each there, but uh, there was a lot to say about those games. Sub yourself up. Let me know what you think.
Comment in the comment section. Sub up to my YouTube channel. Sub up to my YouTube channel. I want to talk to you down there. Helps me out. I'm trying to get to a G. I can start making some money so I can start doing more of these things. Have a great day, everybody. That's my full 42K pod.